Hello people, welcome back to another video. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video today. I have to be really honest with you guys, I've recently um, been taking a bit of a slump in my mental health recently and it's um, it's been, been pretty hard to deal with it. It's been very, very difficult to deal with. Just like with anything, any sort of problems or thoughts that I've had, I just thought that I would come on here and talk to you guys about what's what's been happening and I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what depression is like for me, um, just so that I can get it off my chest and, and hopefully if you're watching this and you're sort of in the same boat we've been struggling a little bit lately, you'll find it somewhat helpful. So I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety when I was 14 years old. I'm 22 now. And it started, it started with some anxiety issues. The anxiety quickly turned into low self-confidence. I struggled a lot with interacting with people. I didn't feel like anybody really wanted me to be around them. It's probably something that's quite linked in with autism because obviously everyone was changing a lot and I didn't quite grasp, you know, what the differences between myself and other people were at that time. But the the low self-confidence and the anxiety problems quickly you know, it made me feel very helpless. You know, as the years went on, going into maybe 16 years old, I, you know, it started to get a bit more severe. Um, I started to self-harm quite a lot. I mean, my, my whole arm, my whole left arm, left wrist, both sides is just covered in, covered in scars because of this stupid habit that I had when I was younger. I think the reason why I did that is because I felt I felt so worthless and I hated myself so much for it. Everyone I felt like everybody else hated me so I it it made me feel like I was doing something productive to hurt myself. It's really weird. Not not it's really stupid. But I've kicked that and I didn't, I haven't done it since I was 17 years old. I did it for quite a while. Um, but that wasn't it really. I was, I was struggling on a, a daily basis. I was struggling with anxiety going to school in the morning. And then throughout the day, um, you know, it got worse and worse and Sometimes I had a meltdown and panic attacks and stuff. Pretty much most days. I had a very supportive school, like a school network over there for um, a special needs unit. Well, it's called The Bridge. And I used to go there quite a lot when I was feeling overwhelmed. And a lot of the time after school I would, I would come back and I would go training or something. I'd go to my Taekwondo training. I'd, uh, I'd go, I'd go with, you know, the usual low self-confidence and motivation that I always had, but it was more of a, a routine for me, so although it was extremely, extremely difficult for me to go every single time, I still, I still went, you know, I had panic attacks a lot on the way to taekwondo sessions. And then after, after I'd finished, my anxiety would sort of calm down a little bit because of the exercise. And then I would start getting depressed and stuff at night. And at one point I was, I was really addicted to exercising a lot. I would, I would exercise, you know, until I threw up or something, just... I would just constantly do it all the time, any sort of free time that I had I would do it because it helped with my anxiety but in the long run I got a lot of like injuries and it made me very sick and 
skinny and my immune system was really bad. I used to have too much sugar. Too much, like way too much sugar. I would I would drink like a two litre bottle of coke. I'd have like a bag of Harry Bows every night. It was the... It wasn't like the sugar, like the taste of the sugar that I needed. I I would have so much. I would I'd drink so much in such a short period of time that it would it would give me like a like a headache. Like I would have so much it would it would peak and then it would make me feel sick and lethargic and ill. And for some reason that that made me that helped a little bit with my anxiety and stuff. So I do that quite a lot, and that was pretty much a, a daily routine for me when I was younger. Anxiety in the morning, overwhelmed at school, coming coming home, eating, going to taekwondo, often having panic attacks and stuff before, low self-confidence, training, feeling a little bit better with my anxiety, coming home, feeling very depressed and you know, upset with myself if I didn't, you know, reach these stupidly high expectations of myself at training. And I would, you know, I would exercise a lot and I would drink loads of sugar and I would self-harm quite a lot and that was pretty much all I did when I was younger. You know, at school I would I would study a lot. I would always try and read ahead of the the years that I was in because I, I wanted to go to university and stuff. So I would study hard. I would train hard, but I didn't enjoy life at all when I was younger. It was absolutely hell. I felt really alone. Really, really, just unbelievably alone. Like even the people who like I knew closely, I didn't feel like they really understood me. I didn't feel like my parents really grasped just how how much it was, how difficult it was for me. Because the thing is with depression is that no one really knows how much you struggle with it. It's often the, you know, the people who are the strongest, the most mentally strong, the most emotionally strong people who deal with, you know, the the hardest amounts of depression, the hardest level, you know, the this really severe levels. You know, the people who aren't like that, they they've gone. You know, they could they couldn't cope with it, and rightfully so. It's it's a very difficult thing to deal with. So you never really know, you know, how it is for somebody. They could be very emotionally weak and me- mentally weak and have a low amount of depression and that could be enough for them, but it's all superficial for how you view people. And, you know, like, I would say that I'm quite, I'm quite a strong person. I'd spent all those years just doing things that I hated, doing things that are really tough for me, trying so desperately to interact with people even though it was scared me shitless, fighting in competitions despite just absolutely dreading the thought of it, just of all the lights and the sensory stuff and you know the confrontation and stuff I did enjoy it I I enjoyed doing it it was it gave me life you know it gave me it gave me something to focus on every time I, I got in the ring when I was fighting I would envision my pain in my opponent It wasn't like a personal thing, it wasn't like a 
confidence thing or an ego thing. It was, if I don't try my absolute hardest in this, I'm a failure. Or I'm, I've given up. And that's why I, I never gave up. I was, always, I've, I've always been commended for just how hard I've worked in the taekwondo sessions. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't always a hard session. It, it really depended on how much effort you put into some, into the work, into the training. And because of that, you know, it was very ra- variable, like how well people did go into those sessions. And I just tried so goddamn hard every single time. Because I knew that as soon as I... As soon as I gave in to anything, I felt weak. I f- feel like I, I, d- I don't have the energy to go on anymore. And I, I just... I, I, don't know, I d- don't know what I would do mes- with myself at all. And there's... It's why I try so hard in everything that I do. Just you know a lot of people compete against themselves. And some other people compete against other people. And it, for me it's not that. For me it's... You know, I'm competing against, against this disease inside of me. All the time. This anxiety, this depression. Constantly. Constantly. It's very easy for people to look at me and think he's cured, you know, he's got over it. And it's not that. You can't, you, it's, it's a chemical imbalance, it takes, it takes ages to get rid of, it's, it's not something that goes away easily, and even if you do put work in every day, all the time, for years and years and years, it still hangs about, ready to just pounce on you when you feel at your worst, when you have a little setback, it just pounces on you. Now a lot of people, a lot of people compare depression to being like a black dog, being like something that just looms over you all the time. Although in a lot of senses it is like that, it's it's a melancholic feeling that just sits on your shoulders and pushes you down constantly. It's more, it's it's different to that. If you've ever loved anyone that's really bad for you. Anything that's bad for you. The worst people in life are those people who seem to be trying to help you. Seem to be understanding you. Who give you comfort and make you feel safe. But again. They're not. Doing it for you. And despite how much. Comfort and safety and. Reassurance you feel like you're getting from. This very toxic person. They just. They perpetuate your own. Insecurities they make you feel worthless, they accept that you're worthless, that you're nothing. In some ways, it, depression is like a black dog, but in other ways it's like your best friend. It's it's so profound, it's, it's, it's hard to to describe it's it's almost like the only thing that you feel comfort in the friends around you can help lift you up and 
can listen to you, but you never, you never feel like they really understand you. And in that way, depression is just, it's like a parasite. A really lovely, ki- seemingly kind and comfortable parasite. <laughs> and if you feel like it loves you and it understands you. Because no one else does in, in your mind, even, even despite what you say. Despite what you try to make yourself feel. Because people don't go back to things that are uncomfortable, things that are horrible. Sorry. Depression is... It's kind, it, it, it comforts you, you... You go to it when you when you feel worthless and you you don't want to do it anymore. You don't want to live anymore. You you go to it. It puts on depressing and sad music. It makes it tells you to eat junk food. It tells you to lay in bed all day and not get up and not work on yourself and not do any anything. It tells you to ignore people people that don't understand you, tells you to be on your own and ignore everything else in life that, that makes you makes you worry and makes you feel scared. You tell it about the problems that you're having. You tell it about the worthlessness that you feel that you, f- you feel like you're a downer on everyone around you you feel you feel like you don't appreciate things in life you don't appreciate the small beauties in everything you know the it's the sunrise or the beautiful flower or the the kind person or the beautiful moment emotional moments you don't care you don't feel anything and it and it makes you feel like a like a piece of shit you feel like it loves you and you you feel so warm and you just feel so at home with it after all after a while of of being like this after years it's hard to know what is you and what is your depression anymore it's so tied into your personality so so much a part of your initial thoughts and emotions and feelings on things you feel like it's just ingrained in you it's sort of digging its tentacles into your brain and it is becoming you and the more that you let the more that you let it control you the more that you slump down into depression the more you think that it's helping you but then you just fall down deeper into this hole And the moment that you think that you've you can control it and you stop putting measures in place, you stop exercising, you stop taking your medication, you stop taking supplements, you stop socialising with people, you stop working, you stop trying to work on yourself. That's when you start slipping down. Because you think, oh you know what, this this is comfortable, I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit. And then the next time it's a little bit longer. And the next time it's even longer. And then you just find yourself back at square one, just in this shit. In this emotional shit. 
and it really just is the worst is you find yourself idolizing you find yourself feeling romantic about the thought of ending your own life thinking about what other people would say and whether the people that treated you badly in your life will feel bad and you start creating a moment in your head and you start fantasizing about it you start planning it just in case and then it becomes a little bit more real as you feel worse it becomes a lot more easy to to do it because you've put all those plans in place even though you don't you don't think you're gonna do it you just feel like you should just in case or something I think the worst thing about it is you know just just feeling like you want to end your life all the time and you know there's people around me people that I love that I really love people that I really love and people that I care about people who want to live and they're enjoying life who have it ended and they, and they die they die this thing that I, I want so much and it's just thrust upon other people that don't want it and I feel so bad like how could how could I want that this thing that is just the most horrific event for everybody involved for yourself for other people around you just the worst thing it's nothing good that comes out of it nothing at all you can't experience life you can't love you can't there's no hope because it's gone there's no second chance you're just gone and I don't know why I want it so much just, you can't explain it you just feel like it's right for some reason it's not something that can be easily easily understood it's not like it's not like being sad I'd prefer I'd love to be sad all the time it's so cathartic you can cry and you can feel better but depression is just that little parasite in your brain telling you that everything's okay and it's okay to be worthless and it's okay that you're not going to achieve anything in your life and it's okay that nobody likes you it tells you all these things that sound like good things sound like positive things but really they're just not because they're wrong you know it's, it's it must be very difficult for people out there who know me that know what I've done I mean like I got I, I achieved a commonwealth gold medal and I still feel like I am worthless because that's what it does to you it makes you feel worthless despite every piece of evidence that tells you that you're not despite all the good things that you could have done and that you have done and even though you know that it's just it's just the depression parasite talking to you it doesn't doesn't make it any different because of course you can you can pass it away once you can pass it away twice you can deal with it for a week you can just push it aside for a week but it only takes a little just small incremental steps of you just going hey yeah, maybe that is true over and over again it keeps on rolling and you keep doing it more and more and then you're you're, you're in a you're in a bad place again it's 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 infiltrated you infiltrated your brain you feel like it is you and then you realize look you have an epiphany moment when you feel like you understand 
how you're feeling and you can you can work through it but it's it's only if you find it if only if you tackle it head on and talk about it and express how you feel and realize and show yourself that you are worth something and that you are strong and you are good and that you are kind but you just you can't you can never tell it's so difficult to tell what is the depression what is you because when you've lived with it for so long like myself and it's such a intense degree you know sometimes you slip slip up Sometimes you want to just let it consume you. You're tired. It's tiring. Especially when you when all the things that are the most tiring things to do are all the things that are gonna help you. Like exercise, meeting up with friends and talking about your emotions with people and accepting the good things that have happened in your life. I've had a lot of problems in my life, you know, uh, nothing, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life, it doesn't matter how strong you are, I mean, just look at Tyson Fury, heavyweight boxer, heavyweight boxer of the world at one point, Extre- incredibly strong and powerful person, succumbed to drug addiction, Succumbed to depression, got overweight, left his career. He's not a weak person. He's a person who's in pain. And that's what depression does to you. It doesn't matter what you like, it doesn't matter how strong you are. If you think that, you know, if I'd had depression, I'd deal with it differently, you're very wrong, my friend. It's not easy. It's constant. All the time. And it's comfortable. You want it. And it becomes a part of you. As soon as you let yourself slip, suddenly you find yourself holding a knife in your hand. You find yourself looking online about how to find ropes, you find yourself looking through the medicine cabinets to see whether there is anything that could end your life if you want to, and then one night you decide to drink a little bit too much and that is there for you, and you think, you know what, screw it, and then you're gone. It's not an instant thing, it's something that takes a long time and it eats away at you if you don't keep it in check. And it does not mean that you are weak just because you're in pain and just because you have this horrible, disgusting parasite. It doesn't go away fully. But you do learn to accept it for what what it is. You do learn to cope with it. And you do learn to differentiate between it and yourself. And grow as a person and change and grow away from it. But it's hard. So, so hard. It's like a full-time job. Constantly. Every day, all day, you could be relaxing at home and you'd still have to try and deal with it. For any of you who are out there and watching this and feeling a bit worried about me, please don't. I'm okay. I just, I have these these rare times when it's not rare but 
I have these rare times when I'm depressed and re- like really, really down. And I also feel like I can talk about it. And then I come on camera and talk about it because I can only really explain to, to people what it's like if I'm if I'm in the thick of it, or else it's it's it's, it's hard to explain. For any of you out there who are currently really, really, really struggling with it, it's okay to struggle with it. It's an illness. It's horrible. And don't feel bad for feeling like that, even if there's no reason to feel like that at all. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person just because you feel like that and there's nothing really to make you feel like that that's what depression is and it's shit I hope that anybody who's watching this and feel feeling like that I, I hope that this doesn't it doesn't make you feel worse it's not supposed to make you feel worse and trigger you or something like that it's just meant for you to feel understood just a little bit so i'm not i'm not going to not going to go out there and say that i'm you know you're going to feel completely understood cuz it's different for everybody and it's the severity is different for everybody Circumstances are different But hopefully just a tiny bit It only takes a tiny bit for you to just go Hey you know what I am going down into a slump I am falling down right now And I haven't Made the effort to catch myself this time But I have now Just work yourself back up Surround yourself with people that you care about, despite how you may feel about how people don't really understand. Just try. They won't. You won't feel completely great about it, but it will help a little bit. Try do things that are good for you. Try just exercise a tiny bit. Do like five push-ups, or go for a walk around the block, or in the field, or in nature, and. Just go for a jog. What else are you going to do? You're going to relax and feel wallow in your own sadness and depression. Yeah. It doesn't help, does it? Just go do something. To any of you out there who are, who is watching this, you know, to really understand what depression is like. I hope that it's helped a little bit. The thing is, is with depression is that it's 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 a complete different thing from sadness. It's very separate. You can't understand it. It's not just being, oh, I feel a bit down kind of feeling. It is the, it is this parasite that takes over your brain and it's this, thing that's deep inside you that just this black hole that's just getting bigger and bigger the more that you you leave it and the more that you play to it and think about your how worthless you are it it grows and it grows and it you just feel like your world's being consumed by it I have decided to put together a a Spotify playlist. I found that the only real real way that I can help people understand what it feels like to be depressed is through music. And I'm trying I'm trying to make my own music right now, but with the the other things that are going on in my li- my life, trying to find a job, trying to work on my channel, trying to pick myself up. Trying to deal with the 
the death of someone who was close to me recently. And it's hard, but I'm trying, and I'm doing lots of things, I'm boxing, and I've gone to the gym today, I've exercised, and I feel a little bit better. It's hard, you got to do those small things though. So that, that Spotify link will be in the description and the, I'll comment it on it at the top of the, top of the video in the comments. If you are feeling down and depressed, don't bloody listen to it, like, it's not for you, <laughs> like, you don't do that. No, no, it might be nice now and again, you know, maybe listen to it for 10 minutes or so, but then turn it off, you need, you need something that's more uplifting, something that's going to make you motivated to get through it rather than something that basically is depression because it makes you feel a bit more comfort and understood it makes you feel a bit shit as well so don't do that okay thank you for watching this video i've I realized that it's quite a long video it's going past 40 minutes now but i hope that there if there is just one person who listens to this and feels a bit better and feels understood and has some renewed motivation to get through it that's that's good enough for me i'm not in it for the views in this one not in it for the money you know <laughs> and again if any of you who know me are watching this i'm fine i'm just trying to be cathartic i'm expressing myself you can be strong you can be mentally strong, emotionally strong, and just because you are failing and you feel like you're failing and you're succumbing to it and you're crying and you're not being able to deal with things, it doesn't mean that you are a weak person. We're fighting demons. People fight kittens. You know, people fight, at the most, a lion. With a sword and a shield, at least they have a chance. We, we've we've got to fight demons, you know. It's it's a bit more of a long process, but you need to train up a little bit more, and it's harder, and it's scary, but you can do it. You can make that demon smaller, you can chip away at it. Be kind to yourself. Thanks very much for watching. See you later, guys.